Now, listen, you know, I promise you we're going to have a conversation about guns and gun violence in America. And there's no organization when it comes to being an advocate for the progressive side on this issue. Um, then the pre I like to call them the P-trip, but the Progressive Campaign Change Committee. Um, and we're joined by their co-founder and a good friend to the Richard Fowler Show and hopefully a good friend of yours, um, Stephanie Taylor. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Great to be here. We're so good to have you. We used to ha- we usually have Adam on. So I said, hey, let's talk to Stephanie tonight. huh?" Okay. Okay. I'm excited to talk to you. Well, first, thanks for being on, and I I know um, it, it's a it's a busy time for you guys over there at the Petro because there's so much going on in the 113th Congress that you guys are involved in, and every time there is a progressive issue or a progressive side, you know the P-Trip is on the right side um, uh, of that. Um, not the necessarily right being the political right, but the right as in the good side of that. But talking about the gu- talking about gun gun control in America. Um, recently, a couple of days back, a couple of days ago, we saw the president release his plan for gun control from Joe Biden's task force, and that included a myriad of things. It was 19 executive orders. Um, there was a lot of stuff to deal with, you know, better enforcement of the current federal laws that exist. But beyond that, it also asked for Congress to do a couple of things. First thing being, you know, the assault rifle assault rifles ban. Um, another thing being, you know, more funding for school resource officers and funding for college active shooter plans and on and on and on and on. Now, what what is what's your opinion on all, all these uh, developments happening from the White House? Um, well, as you know, uh, we have been a critic often of the White House. Um, in fact, I don't know of another organization that has been been more critical and more issues. Um, but in this particular case, we are extremely excited to see the White House plan. Um, this is really what we need right now. We need a plan that's thinking big. Um, that's taking bold action against gun killings. Um, we were thrilled to see that the plan involves uh, renewing and strengthening the ban on assault weapons, which absolutely has to happen, um, and that the plan also involved immediate action. It immediately involved these 23 executive orders that, that President Obama uh, took action right away. Um, that was extremely exciting, and, and we're prepared to really get behind this plan and really push it. Um, because it is incredibly exciting to see this kind of big, bold action coming from the White House. I think you're right on that. Now, talking about those, and I said 19 before, I, I want to uh, say that it was actually, I, you were correct, it's 23 executive orders. Now, of those 23 executive orders, what is the most, what would you say is the most comprehensive or the most important when it comes to solving the gun violence problem in this country, or, or just in general? Like, what's the most potent of those 23, I guess, was the right question. Well, there were some, there were a couple very good ones. Um, you know, the fact that there's going to be now more federal data available for background checks, um, I think it's going to be very valuable for making background checks more comprehensive. Um, ending a freeze on government research on gun violence um, is just something that uh, should be done um, as as a, a society that values um, research and science and and uh, what that can tell us. Um, so, so these were all good steps. Um, now, when it comes to the stuff that I think will actually make a real long-term difference, um, that's where you need Congress, right? Um, that's where you get uh, what Congress needs to do is to renew and strengthen the ban on assault weapons, eliminate loopholes, require background checks for gun sales. Um, all of this stuff is in Obama's plan, but this is the kind of stuff that we really need Congress to act on. Now, Stephanie, as you already, as you always know, as my mom always says, where there's a will, there's a way, um, and clearly there there is a will here. But do you think that there is a way to get this through John Boehner's House of Representatives? You know, I do um, for a couple of reasons. Um, there is just a really massive groundswell right now of the public saying enough is enough. We keep having these mass shootings. People are living in fear. Our teachers are going to work. Uh, every day teaching kids and being afraid for their safety. And and people are sick of it, and I think that this is really um, uh, becoming a bipartisan issue. It, it's interesting because we have uh, on our list, we have a million members on our list on boldprogressives.org, and we've, we've been asking our members what they think about this. And, and we hear from a lot of members, some of them are Republicans, some of them are NRA members or former NRA members, a lot of them are gun owners, um, and they're all saying, you know what, it's time to be responsible gun owners. It's, it's, it's really time to look at um, how we do gun ownership in America and make sure that it's responsible gun ownership. And so I think that there is a path forward. Obviously, it's also going to require 
uh, outside groups, grassroots groups continuing to apply really, really heavy pressure. Um, as of this morning, over 90,000 PCCC members uh, have taken action against gun violence, um, including over 50,000 in the last 24 hours alone. Um, so I think that you really are seeing people just taking tons of action on this issue. I, I think and I think the action is exactly what we need here. Um, sometimes, you know, uh, Ronald Reagan was famous for saying, if they don't see the light, they'll feel the heat. And, and I think that is what the P-Trip is so good at doing, is they're good at bringing the heat to members of Congress, especially those, because, you know, we don't necessarily need the entire Republican caucus for this bill to pass. We just need maybe 20, what is it, 25 now, or 20, 20 Republicans to come across the aisle and vote mm -hmm. with Democrats on this. Mm -hmm. um, it's just for John Boehner to have the leadership enough to bring it to the floor. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's absolutely right. Um, and there's another thing, too, that I think is going to happen in the course of this conversation, and I think that that's um, that people are beginning to take a really hard look at the NRA. And the NRA for a long time has cloaked itself in the idea of being this issue campaign, being a single-issue campaign. Um, and so I think people have a lot of times as ascribed this kind of uh, lack of political bias to, to the NRA, uh, by, by people I mean in general voters. Um, and I think that voters are really beginning to take a harder look at the NRA and looking at the fact that the NRA is you know, a right-wing propaganda machine that regardless of their record on the NRA issues, the NRA will side, time and time again side against Democrats um, you know, for no reason at all, um, that, that really their agenda is not about responsible gun ownership. Their agenda is, is a very right-wing um, and, and increasingly, to be honest, if you judge by Wayne LaPierre's press conference, is increasingly unhinged agenda. Um, and, and so I, I think that's the other thing that's happening right now is that, uh, in, including moderate Republicans, I think are going to become very uncomfortable with associating with the NRA. And, and speaking about moderate Republicans, um, you know, I think we've seen a, there's a lot of moderate Republicans in the United States Senate, on the other hand, where we've seen that, you know, a lot of moderate, some people like Olympia Slow, who's leaving, who left the Senate because she felt as though they didn't get enough done. Do you think moderate Republicans, maybe people like the Pat Toomey's of this world, um, you know, those moderate Republicans that are left in the United States Senate and the new, you know, progressives that are in the Senate, do you think there's a stronger sense of getting this through the Senate or is it going to go through the House first? Um, that's hard to say. Um, but I do think that there is, uh, there is room, I think that, that there is room to apply pressure on moderate Republicans in the Senate. Um, and I think we absolutely should, um, in, in, I should say in both the Senate and the House, um, and I think, again, it's all going to come down to hearing this real uh, outcry and this real bipartisan outcry from their constituents. Um, I would ask folks to uh, join us to take action. You know, come to boldprogressives.org. That's our website. Um, right now, folks are signing petitions, showing support for the White House plan. We're making calls to Congress. Um, we're going to really be keeping the heat up both on Democrats and Republicans um, in, in districts, uh, applying pressure, and showing how many constituents really want to see action now. And where are the and I think you know all politics are local. So where are where where is the P Triple C going? Where are they at, where where are they targeting? On um, which Republicans do you guys think are the easiest for you guys to get to, or the easiest for you to isolate and say, hey, this is the thing you need to vote for. You need to vote for you know for universal background checks. You need to vote vote on assault rifles assault rifles ban. Um. That's a little tough to say right now. I think that we're still trying to get a lay of the land. Um, one thing that's really helpful from the calls that are going in right now, um, they basically serve as a whip count because constituents, there are members, um, members of other groups like Credo Action, uh, are calling and asking, where do you stand on this issue? And when members do that and then they report back, that actually allows us to really crowdsource the whip count and really figure out, where where people are falling on this issue, both Republicans and the Democrats, and then be able to figure out from there uh, what the battle plan is, who do we need to target, who do we need to really go and, and start applying pressure to. I, I think pressure is needed here, folks. I got to tell you, like Ronald Reagan says, like I said it already, if they don't see the light, they'll feel the heat. Stephanie Taylor, co-founder of the PCCC, thank you so much for being on the program tonight. We appreciate you. Thank you.
And, and you know, I got to tell you, folks, I, I think Stephanie is completely and totally right on this. And I think the PCCC has their message right. You got to continue to turn the heat up, continue to keep the volume up, continue to press, continue to push until we get an, a, a true assault rifles uh, ban done. And now beyond that, even universal background checks, something we could do right now if Congress is willing to act. And one thing that I want to uh, end the, this the, this out on is this one point. What Republicans have to understand is if they don't do it now, when if it, under John Boehner, if Nancy Pelosi becomes a speaker again in 2014, the laws are going to be even harsher against the NRA and even worse.